someone actually drove their car through those doors and started stealing. Thieves stole $100,000 worth of stuff from this Louis Vuitton store in Orange County, California. Since the incident, they've now closed the main entrance door, so the only way to access the store is to go through the department store. Crime in California has been surging. I had somebody slash the four Michelin tires that were almost brand new. People are just doing whatever they want. California's violent crime rate and property crime rate are up. You guys have seen those videos where like someone parks their Tesla with all the windows rolled down and there's like the Back seats are tilted for it, just so people know like, there's nothing in here, don't break in. If you think about it, overall crime should be down. Surveillance cameras and security technology is more advanced than ever, but none of that seems to matter. The looting is crazy, laptops stolen off her back seat. Retail crime, which costs the state billions every year. And across the U.S., it's costing trillions of dollars every year. I worked retail, so all kinds of people walking in at all, all times of the night. Most people are blaming a change to California's law, which reduced the consequences for stealing. And in some cases, no consequences at all. Smash and grab of the Louis Vuitton store there in Union Square. They're actively looking for about 30 people who are trying to break into other stores. And they get to walk out of the store with everything. Are we supposed to fight them? Are we supposed to like incite more violence? Retailers are having to change their strategy. And now stores and malls are having to step up their security measures like crazy. Or putting locks on freezers. So if you want to buy something like frozen mac and cheese, you'll need to call for an attendant to help. And in some cases, it might be cheaper to literally just close your store completely. It is closing five more stores amid high retail theft in the city. This surge in crime has become not just a safety matter, but a political one, too. Robbing, it shouldn't happen in general, but I'm sure people have like their reasons or like what they want to stand for. So, yeah, I don't know. Some will justify their actions with complaints about their government, but most people here seem fed up. The city, mayor, they don't do anything. So why has the crime gotten so bad around the U.S., especially in California? The people had spoken. It was 2014 when 60% of voters said they were in support of what's called Prop 47. And this law stated that stealing merchandise under $950 worth of value would just be classified as a misdemeanor. See, something like that used to be considered a felony. So if you stole, let's say, an iPad, that used to mean you could go to jail for one year or more. But after this was put into place, you might get a fine just for an hour in a local jail or even let off the hook completely. Prop 47 also applied to levels of drug possession too. Those in favor of Prop 47 say that it'll actually improve public safety and it'll save taxpayers hundreds of millions of dollars. It clearly is going to reduce the numbers of people in prison. Instead of investing in punishment, we're investing in people. But what was supposed to save taxpayers money has left many people I interview feeling unsafe and angry. Why is it that people can go in and shoplift, and as long as they shoplift under $950, can't do a damn thing to them? A lot of them would just walk away out of the store with like a huge case of beer or whatever, and there's, they're not stopped. And that's that's the problem where we're, we're afraid to touch, we're afraid for other issues, so we don't stop them, we let them go. Critics said Prop 47 is basically a get out of jail free card. And when you let a thief go after getting caught, chances are they'll do it again and again and again. The one person got arrested three times in the same day for stealing cars. He got busted three times in one day and they still put him out, in the, out, out on the street. Now that's totally ludicrous. When you don't have consequences for actions, people just kind of come in and start thinking that they can do whatever they want and that we're free, so therefore nobody's going to stop us. And in a weird series of events, cops actually might be happy if the value stolen was more than $950. I had somebody slash the four Michelin tires that were almost brand new, a car of mine, and the policeman came out and asked me, he says, well, he says, first thing out of his mouth is, how much is the value of the damage you had done? And I said, about $1,200. He says, good, and he says, I can go ahead and report it. If it was $950 or less, he says, I would have to just ignore it and say, have a good day. While the newer criminal justice policies created a big change, the surge in crime cannot solely be attributed to Prop 47. See, California has a high level of economic inequality. Its poverty rate is higher than the national average. And with higher poverty, sometimes that drives people toward crime. And then there's the pandemic. If you look at San Francisco, much of the city went
went from being a bustling business vibe to a ghost town because businesses chose to let employees work remotely instead of coming in. The city was heavily dependent on business and workers to survive, and without those people, the city has been suffering. A year after Prop 47 was put into place, almost 200,000 felonies were erased. Of course, many of those were not limited to thefts, but the purpose of Prop 47, well, it began to work. See, the number of people in California's jails did go down after this was put into effect. But in recent years, things have become very chaotic. If the criminal knew he stole somebody's car and he was going to get five years without plea bargaining it down to time served, then I think that they would think twice about doing stuff like that. If somebody comes out and gives them a hard time, the person that did it will end up in jail or lose his job for trying to do what is right. No, I think Gaston is the worst thing that we've ever had here in California. Well, unfair, I'm not gonna lie, like that just being a misdemeanor, I feel like it should be a little bit more. But what happens next? A new bill aims to tackle retail theft for people who are repeat offenders. The government should do a lot of things. They should fix a lot of problems and they're not doing any of that. I think it's just us to up to us, the people, right? Retailers signed an information sharing agreement hoping to improve their collaboration with law enforcement. Change that, make it a little more strict so people can't stop looting. There has been talk to repeal or revise Prop 47 or even reduce the $950 threshold to like $400. Some studies have shown that Proposition 47 has led to an increase in property crimes. There's also been an increase in the cost of crime. Even though Prop 47 has truly saved the state money on incarceration costs, it's also increased the cost of crime in other ways. Businesses have had to increase security measures to protect themselves from shoplifting and other crimes, and often these mean higher prices for consumers. No one seems to know how to fix this problem, and some don't even see it as a problem. Prop 47 is once again in the spotlight. At least three bills have been introduced on this topic so far. See, Prop 47 has many supporters to this day, one of them, John Legend. Since it passed, Prop 47 has reduced incarceration in the nation's most populous state by more than 20,000 people annually without making crime go up. But one girl I meet during an interview thinks that the ultimate solution is me and you. We the people should be the ones that are stepping up to this and just like not be afraid to just step in and just say like, hey, this is not okay. It comes down to if there's not anybody that can come in and, and save us, we gotta save ourselves, right? If there's, if you see something that's going on that's not okay and you don't feel safe in a store or something, I realize that our life is precious and we're scared. Like what if we die? What if? I don't owe this person anything. Why should I jump in? You never know. You, you could be saving a life. You could be doing something really great. But I do understand that it's a big issue and the government has a lot of work to do currently.